of the School of Theology, uh, missionary to Eritrea Division, field secretary, stewardship director, union executive secretary, and currently he is the personal uh, ministries and Sabbath school director for Zimbabwe East Union. He has a passion for using modern technology in reaching souls for Christ. Together with Mrs. Chifamba, who is also seated amongst us, they run daily manner devotionals that are always posted on various social media. You can agree with me that it's a long bio that I could not cram. Yeah, welcome, Pastor. When your time comes, we'll allow you to speak to us. Okay, to help us start our worship this evening, let's call our choristers and turn to song number 183. I will sing Jesus love. Verse 3. 
John 17 verse 3. I hope you're there. I'm reading from uh, King James Version. It says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I repeat, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. May the reading be blessed. I know welcome the speaker to come and give us the message of God. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Kenya is a very special place in my heart. I'm from Zimbabwe. My wife is from Zimbabwe. But we have a Kenyan marriage certificate. Can you give us a big amen? So I'll find every excuse to come to Kenya. And this was one excuse for me to come to Kenya. Okay, thank you, conference uh, organizers. Give them a big amen. Amen. That's a good, good, good experience. And uh, AUA is a very special place. Uh, about 22, 20 so years ago, we were here when there was nothing. We walked up this place here uh, with uh, the GC Vice President, uh, Loyal Cooper, uh, the Division President then, uh, Pastor Mwana, and uh, Dr. Guri was uh, the Executive Secretary, and uh, the Division and the GC were deciding where to have the Division offices and set up a university in Africa. So we walked. It was just uh, these uh, acacia trees up here. And we prayed here for a university to be put in Africa. Little did I know that one day I was going to study here and come here. I didn't know. And every time I come here, I can say, see what the Lord has done. Amen. Yes. It's amazing. From a bush to a world-class university. Oh, no, let me not say, for, to a heavenly-class university. <laughs> uh, it's amazing, I'm telling you. And little did I know that my son was also going to do MPH with this university. <clears throat> Little did I know that my wife was going to present a paper here which gave me an excuse to be here. So can you give my wife a big event? Amen. <laughs> Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Our kind Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this conference. It has been wonderful. And as we look into your word, we pray that you might speak to each one of us. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. amen. The teacher who did not know. Uh, when we were in primary school, we used to have a teacher who would say, what I don't know is not knowledge. <laughs> you know, teachers then had this power of, of, of knowledge and of knowing. But uh, with AI today, uh, there are students who know more than the teacher. Yeah. 
And also to us who are pastors, please don't misquote Ellen White because the kids will be just uh, there checking your quotations. I know of a pastor who was very embarrassed one time when uh, he has finished preaching. A young man came to him and said, But Pastor, uh, that quotation you said is from where? Pastor, there's no such quotation in Ellen White. Are we together? So as uh, the, this technology increases, we have to be on the edge with technology. The Bible actually tells us that you must be the head and not the tail. And as we have seen throughout the week, this technology can be used for good or for bad. Are we together? So us who are in leadership, us who are uh, theologians, let's harness this technology for the good. That teacher who did not know. I think some of you have heard the story of uh, an uneducated man who had the privilege of uh, taking the learned professor across the river. But the professor could not swim. So as they were as they were moving and going, the professor just went up time and to make fun of this uh, illiterate man, he would say to him, do you know archaeology? And uh, this poor man holding his little hand would say, what in the world is that? Then he would laugh, ha, 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 ha. You have missed half of your life. And I went on, do you know entomology? And this old man would look and say, what in the world is that? And the professor would laugh. And he would go on with all these lodges and uh, lodges and lodges. Then, uh, when they were in the middle of the river, the man with the little canoe suddenly noticed that upstream rain had fallen. And uh, a flood was coming with logs and everything. So he turns to this uh, professor and he says, uh, Professor, do you know semiology? And uh, the professor says, there's no English word like that. What is physiology? And the man looked at him and said, you have missed it. Uh -uh. All of your life, not half of your life, but you have missed it. all of your life. And uh, the, 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 the poor man jumped into the river and uh, he's swimming, and the professor was gone. <coughs> there are certain critical skills that all of us should have. We might know everything that happens uh, on air, but uh, as our word has said in John chapter 3, uh, I mean John chapter 17, verse 3, and this is eternal life. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Let us not make technology our savior. Let God remain God even if we have that uh, technology that is at the cutting edge. We should not displace God with technology. Now I love uh, what Jeremiah, Jeremiah says and uh, Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 to 24. He says thus says the Lord let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. And right here, Jeremiah has mentioned the things that the entire world is running after. Some of us also are running after. Wisdom. I had the privilege of being taught by a man who had three uh, PhDs, and when the students would introduce him, uh, just for fun, he would say, Today, our speaker 
is a doctor, 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 so and so. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, Amen. that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Amen. That, that just reminds me of, uh, of Micah. Micah says, uh, with what shall I come to the Lord? Shall I come with rivers of oil? Then Micah answers, and he says, God is answering Micah, and he says, he has shown thee, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? But that you do justly, you love mercy, and you walk humbly with your God. Amen. To know the Lord, is to be loving and lovable. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the week, we've been told that uh, this uh, AI can, 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 can have the aspect of isolating each one of us. I have noticed it with the kids, or even with us, yes. As, as, as people, uh, it's uh, supper time, and uh, the kid is on the phone, the mother is also on the phone. The, the, the father is on the phone. That time to talk and interact is no longer there. So what is good should not be used to, uh, I mean, what is good should not be used to destroy what is better. We need time with our children. We need time with our spouses. No, I have met it in my life that uh, whenever I have a good enough excuse, I will travel with my wife. Mm -hmm. I will hear that. Oh. Yeah, if you have a good enough excuse, travel with your wife. You know, it is very protective. I will talk to the pastors that are here. At one time, I was serving in one city, and a lady called, and uh, she says, Pastor. Can you please come uh, to our house? I need to talk to you. And I forgot about it. I don't know whether it was uh, by divine or what, but I forgot about it. And then she phoned again. Pastor, please. Then the third time she phoned, she says, Pastor, you are a man of God. Please, today you have to come. So I immediately took the car keys and I, and I, and I went to the, to the garage and I took out the car. And as I was reversing, I stopped. And I ran back into the house and I said to my wife, I can't come by me. And I said, no, I'm said, no, 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 we'll come back just now. Let's go. I want to tell you that was my salvation. Mm -hmm. She was staying across the city. We drove with my wife across the city. And when we knocked at the door, that lady was hardly dressed. But thank God, I had this opportunity. My wife was like, thank you. Hallelujah. I want to say, my dear brothers and my dear sister, the, 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 the world we are living in, we need time with our families. We need time with our children. And above all, we need time with God. Be still and know that I am God. So we can end up being like the people that are described by the Apostle Paul in Romans who he says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. How did they become fools? They forgot God. What is the biblical definition of a fool? 
Psalm 14 verse 1. The fool is saying in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of man to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. You can't be an educated fool if you don't know God. Don't be the teacher who did not know. Now I want to ask you, my brothers and sisters, is it possible to be a worker in God's vineyard and yet not know the Lord? Is it? Is it possible to graduate cum laude in the Old Testament, cum laude in the New Testament, and yet not know God? The Bible gives us an example. In the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, and uh, I read, Now the sons of Eli, what were the sons of Eli? What was their position? They were priests, isn't it? Yes. Were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. It is possible to be a priest and not know the Lord. It is possible to be a conference president and not know the Lord. The sons of Eli, and you remember that time when uh, they had war with the Philistines, you remember that time? And Israel was defeated and they said, uh, let us go and take the ark. And Hophine and Phineas came to the battlefield Carry the ark. But the ark was in their hands and not in their hearts. And so all Israel rejoiced and the, the Bible said it sounded like thunder when Hophine and Phineas stepped on to the battleground. They lost the war because they did not know the Lord although they had good positions. In the book, uh, Christian Leadership by Ellen White, it says, a man's position does not make him one jot or tittle greater in the sight of God. It is character alone that God values. Let someone say amen out there. Yesterday, we were reminded of the famous statement last night. By, by, by Ellen White, that God wants people who cannot be bought or sold. People who are true to duty as a little is to the poor. Those are the people that I wanted. I want to say, as AUA cooks us here in the pressure cooker of academics, let us also leave this place with good characters. To represent God. And not only our university. You know, if you go out there and you mess up, you are not just messing up for yourself. You are messing up for this university. You are messing up for the church. You are messing up for God. Another, another teacher who did not know. You remember the story of... Uh, uh, Nicodemus Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and uh, Nicodemus says uh, oh, teacher we know that you are a teacher sent from God for no man can do such things as you do I want to tell my brothers and sisters that are in leadership here at the university be careful of people who flatter you don't drink flattery. You will go down the drain. And Jesus immediately did not talk about what the man had said. He simply said, Except a man be born again, 
he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, Nicodemus was an educated man. Nicodemus was a member of the Sanhedrin, but he did not know a teacher who did not know. And so Nicodemus says, how can these things be? How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said, are you a teacher in Israel and do not know these things? Yeah, he knew how to pass the Greek and uh, put the words in the right place. He knew uh, how to, to, to translate the Hebrew, the Aramaic and everything. He knew. But he did not know that Jesus was the Savior. Because when he comes, he says, we know that you are a teacher. He did not say, we know that you are the Savior. We know that you are a teacher. I want to say, my brother and my sister, we need to know the Lord. And it was during that interview that we get one of the very best verses in our, in our scripture. Jesus explaining in John chapter 3 verse 14 to 16 and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, or everlasting life. I want to say, my brothers and my sisters, this is the knowledge that we should have personally, that Jesus is our Savior. Amen. As Moses lifted up the serpent, you remember in the wilderness when those people were beaten by serpents and uh, Moses cried to the Lord and God said, you put up a serpent on a pole and whosoever shall look shall be saved. I want to say, my dear brothers, my dear sister, the world is not so, not so much in need of money as it is of an uplifted Savior. The Africa is not so much in need of PhDs, although they are good, as it needs people who have seen the Lord. Pastors who know the Lord. You know, in the book Evangelism, page 185, paragraph 2, we read, Lift up Christ, Christ crucified, Christ risen, Christ ascended into the heavens, Christ coming again, should so often gladden and fill the mind of the minister that he will present this truth to the people in love and deep earnestness. The minister will then be lost sight of and Jesus will be made manifest. One of our greatest problems today is ministers that want to be crowd pullers to themselves. They preach for likes and not the solid truth as is in the Bible. We are told here the minister should be lost sight of. And Christ shall be seen. Lift up Jesus, not self. Lift up Jesus, not self. Even in the papers that you are writing, lift up Jesus, not self. Don't just do a research for the sake of a research. When you do a research, you think, how is it going to build the kingdom of Christ? She goes on to say, on paragraph 3 of the same, lift up Jesus, 
You that teach the people, lift him up in sermon, in song, in prayer. Let all your powers be directed to pointing souls confused, bewildered to the Lamb of God. Lift him up, the risen Savior. Amen. Say to all who hear, Come to him who has loved us and has given himself for us. Let these signs of salvation be the burden of every sermon, the theme of every song. Let it be poured forth in every supplication. Went for a holiday in a certain place. Then uh, it was midweek. I said, uh, "Let's look for let's look for an Adventist here. We can just pray with an Adventist. So look for a place where there was uh, some some Adventist. And uh, went there, and the Adventist called his neighbors. They are forgetting that uh, that situation. So I just preached. A short sermon, you know, the pastor on holiday should not preach too much. <laughs> Just preach a short sermon. And uh, when I sat back, sat down, the man who was sitting next to me, the neighbor, a non Adventist, held my hand. I said, Pastor, crying. Was this one crying? Is it all? Is it all? Can't you tell us more about Jesus? Rather, I stood up and I pulled my heart out. I preached until I don't know what time. I was so touched to find that in the world there, there are souls that are dying to hear about Jesus. So I want to say, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, to know him is to lift him up. To know him is to lift him up. This is what the Apostle Paul says, who was also a preacher and a teacher. The Apostle Paul says, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher to the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know. Whom I have believed. Okay, can you say that, my brother? Yes. When session comes, can you say, I know <laughs> whom I have believed? Can you? Or oh, you will be singing, as uh, Chi Ting Yi used to say, I'm pressing on the upward way. Uh, new heights, now I'm at the conference. Uh, new heights, I'm getting every day. Now I'm at the union. Now I'm at the division. What is left is the Jesus? Or as you say, if you are a bit humble, as the, 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 the nominating committee is singing, I mean sitting, you'll be saying, pass me Lord, O gentle Savior. <laughs> Hear my humble cry. <laughs> Why are you not that one calling? Do not pass me by. <laughs> I want to say, my brother, my sister, to know the Lord is to say anyway with Jesus and it's every go. Anyway! Don't be in this habit of uh, uh, killing each other for the sake of position. You can be a conference president hell bound. A matter of the brothers. So I'm saying my dear brother, my dear sister, you should be able to say with the Apostle Paul, I know whom I have believed. No, one of the men that uh, really shaped my ministry and made me to be happy anywhere I am was an old pastor who is late now called Pastor Chalani. He made this statement. He said, son, you will always be, that's how it speak, you will always be where God wants you to be. Even if the devil inspires the nominating committee, you will always be where God wants you to be. Even if the devil inspires.
bias the nominating committee. Yes. The devil inspired the nominating committee of the brothers of Joseph. And they threw him in a pit. But the script goes, the Lord was with Joseph. He went, he went into Potiphar's house and the devil inspired the nominating committee of Mrs. Potiphar and they threw him in prison. But the script says, the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. My brother, come please. Can you sing for me? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Please come. This we forget. Can you just. I'm closing. I'm closing. Let, let me just get this little voice here. <laughs> Someone, can you put anyone with Jesus? Anyone with Jesus? Please. Yeah. Just a uh, stanza. Anyone with Jesus? I can safely go. And uh, let's sing in minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it, it is good to, uh, when uh, you are being called to the union to say anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. <laughs> huh? But when you are going to Trukana, <laughs> you say, the brethren have forgotten me. <laughs> yeah, I know there was someone in that committee who didn't <laughs> like me. Anywhere is anywhere. <laughs> can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor? Oh. Neighbor? Anyway, is there anyone? Amen. Let's sing that song a bit. Then I'll go. Of the dead. 
that I might know him. And the power of his resurrection, you remember. You remember what Job said. But I know that my redeemer lives. Let somebody say, Amen. Wow, amen. Do you know Jesus? Can you be confident? My last story, then I will sit down. A friend of mine was in South Africa. And uh, there was a shootout in the restaurant where he was. And everyone was going under, under tables and under what? The shopkeeper, the, the owner of the shop, was a watchtower. Jehovah's Witness. And uh, after the this shooting, when there was quiet, he peeped and he saw my friend standing. <coughs> and he goes to my friend and said, How come you are standing? Are you not your friend? And my friend turns to him and he says, I believe in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And the white tower, white man, fell down on his feet and he held his legs and said, please, please pray for me. Hmm. Now, if you understand anything about what you tell, if you want to send them away and say, let us pray. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you. But when this man exhibited that I might know him, and the power of his resurrection, a man broke down, and all barriers of denominations were, were broken down. The world wants to see Jesus. It doesn't need better preachers. Even the humblest girl, the humblest person can lift up Jesus. May God bless us as we conclude this that we might not be the teacher who did not know. But that we might be the teacher who says, I know in whom I have believed. May God bless you. Amen. 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 What a wonderful way to conclude the conference. Thank you, Pastor, for that wonderful message. I hope that uh, each one of us, everything that we've learned this week, we will use it in lifting up Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our closing song is a song number 529. Five, five, Under His Wings.
Thank you for this seminar where we have been taught many things that can assist us in our different places of labor. We want to pray, Lord, that as we have acquired this knowledge, we might not lose you in this knowledge. We want to pray that we might know you, and when we know you, we might lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Just a short one uh, as we leave. Um, the services uh, have been live streamed and they are accessible on YouTube. So I just want to let you know that those who are interested, you can just look for um, on YouTube, you can look for Morning Service Adventist University of Africa, then you'll be able to access what has been done, the spiritual part of the conference. May the Lord bless you as we dig into a new week in Jesus' name. Amen. So 337 in as we are going out and enjoy the rest of the week as we start a new week.